Dorf Foreman in Carl Shorten and Wallington. And they both fell to the Lib Dems. Um, Tom Brake got in in Carl Shorten and Wallington. And Paul Burstow in Sutton and Cheam. Two quite hefty swings as well. I think it was 11 and a half and just under 13 as well. So big shocks all round there. Apparently the Tories stayed at home. Right. Well, as obviously the Lib Dems were, were delighted by this. But uh, Labour, although it increased its, although it increased its share in, in one seat, mm. In um, Sutton and Cheam, I think it was. No, I beg your pardon, Wallington and Carl Shulton. I think it was a 25% increase, wasn't it? Yeah. But they didn't like that at all, did they? They were accusing the Lib Dems of dirty tricks. That's Tom Brake, right. would he do that sort of thing? I think at the end of the day, it was in a very emotional night, and uh, perhaps the Labour chap had been watching all the results rolling across the country and thought perhaps, you know, he was in with a chance of clinching this one. I think, from our point of view, it was quite a, cl a cleanly fought fight, shall we say. Um, we were very fair in our coverage and I think it came out that people were all moving towards the same goals. Now, of course, the Tories have been accused of not running a, a tight enough ship in their campaign. This will go on and on for the, at least the next couple of months, I would have thought, but sour grapes as far right. as we're concerned. I there think. was a lovely comment from the uh, outgoing um, Mr Foreman. He thanked the people of Car Shelton and Wallington for putting up with him for 21 years. I yeah. thought that was lovely, actually. Yeah, very nice. And also, he lost a stone and a half during the yes. campaign as well. <laughs> so perhaps I should go and well, try to get into Parliament. I'm not sure. Yes, well, let's not, let's not pursue that line of inquiry. <laughs> let's turn now to um, some other small, cuddly creatures. Um, pet animals. It seems there's a rent crisis in the local animal hospital in Sutton. What's all that about? Oh, it's a very, very sad story. The RSPCA have got a clinic at the bottom of the High Street in Sutton and the landlord, for one reason or another, has hiked up the rent and it'll now be something like six and a half, just over six and a half thousand a year. And the charity just can't cope. I mean, they are self-financing to, you know, almost 100% and rely very much on volunteers and obviously donations. Well, they used to have a shop, didn't they? That closed down, so that's really stymied them. That's it? right. So now it's literally fundraising events, whether it would be boot sales or jumble sales. And what they're really looking for in a bid to actually save the service, which is very important, um, is a benefactor who is a property owner who likes animals to actually offer them something that's suitable within the area but at a lower rent. Yes, otherwise so. it seems that um, RSPCA is going to give people money to take their pets to a, a regular vet. And have that's them done it. I mean, it would be involve a voucher scheme, whereas now the clinic offers the facility for poorer pet owners to bring their pet there with the, and have the vet on site. So, of course, it encourages people to actually treat their pets you know, or actually be more aware of the needs of their pet's health, whereas otherwise they might think, oh, well, I can't afford to do that, that'll go on the back burner. And yes, if this closes, the nearest one will either be Putney or Cla uh, Croydon. So is this the sort of story that you're likely to follow up after the campaign, isn't it? I think so. I mean, you know, the perfect solution would be obviously if someone read this story and then got in touch with the Herald and said, oh, we can help, we can help. So I think we're all sitting here with our fingers crossed that that might happen. Well, if they'd like to phone Channel 1, I'm sure Absolutely, we'll be very grateful. Absolutely, yes. Right, yes. we're running out of time, so let's move on. We'll leave aside. We were going to do a story about the railways, but we'll leave that aside. So let's go on to the Grumpy Vicar, Suffer the Little Children story. Two little kids running around in a family service. Um, uh, in all, in all Saints Church in Carl Shulton, and the vicar, who's 80 years old, believed to be the longest-serving vicar in the country, had a bit of a had a bit of a go at them and upset them. Yes, them. he did. I mean, again, it's the big question: how young is too young to be brought into a formal surround such as a church? Now, these two little tots, aged two and three, got rather overexcited, and just as the uh, I think it's the Reverend Lee Edwards at That's All it. Saints Carl Shulton, just as he came to the penultimate <laughs> end of his service, they started screaming and running up and down the aisles, to which he marched up and told them to be quiet. And I another wonderful quote from him as well. It. This sort of behaviour may be uh, encouraged in happy clappy services, but not in my church, <laughs> said the vicar. Good for him. Now, we, very briefly, we have to move on to the last one. Making a stand for one night. This comes off the back of a TV documentary. I forget That's the right. name of that. But featured a Wallington local, Bonnie Armstrong, who said she'd had 25 one night stands the last eight months, and what was wrong with that? Well, you Precisely. went onto the streets, and what did your locals have to say about yes, this? Yes, well, a lot of them said, yep, yeah, one night stands are fine as long as it's no strings attached. So, uh, of course, the big question was, who would you choose yes, then? And well, uh, guess who came out as number one on the girls' front? Well, I know what you're going to say now. You're going to say Brad Pitt, aren't you? Oh, yeah, well, Brad Pitt, and also um, the boys oh, chose... Gemma Rinnequay. Yeah, oh, yes, yeah. Gemma oh, Whatever his name is. Yes, and also Jerry from the Spice Jerry Girls from the Spice as well. Girls. And Rachel from Friends. They were all very, very popular. No surprises there. <laughs> Kate Porter from the Sutton Herald, thank you very much indeed. My pleasure.
Hello, Amanda. Welcome to Channel One. Tell us briefly about the style and the aims of the newspaper. We aim to be a paper of record, providing information and entertainment and news, but in a responsible way. Now, something that's been of great concern to residents in the Edgware area, the Edgware General Hospital was proposed to be run down or even closed. The new Health Secretary, Frank Dobson, has called a halt to the closure and uh, created a little bit of confusion, it seems. Yes, um, the trust which ran the hospital uh, originally announced that it had a deficit of £4 million. It didn't have that much, had, it was, this budget was short by that much each year. Um, so they said, we've got to do something, and it's ended up with them running down Edgware General. The A&E's closed, the cardiology unit's gone, um, and although um, Frank Dobson has called this halt, I think any plans they had, they've just run them through. So we're hoping that he'll call a review very shortly. Um, and that their, plans, so that their plans will stop, so that they'll uh, stop running down the hospital. And in the same week, another hospital has also said that it's running very short of cash. Mm -hmm. Neighbouring Northwick Park has said it has the same problem. But instead of saying, let's run down our hospital, they're saying, look, we cannot manage with this much money. We've got to do something. We're going to lose quality. And because a lot of the uh, patients that used to go to Edgware are now going to Northwick Park, it's, it's bad news all round. Another great story, Councillor Agnes Slocum was finally made Mayor of Barnet on Thursday. She's had a few stumbling blocks along the way though, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, there were a few hitches for poor Agnes. Um, the Labour group in Barnet Council is a minority, but it's the ruling group because it has a pact with the um, Liberal Democrats. Um, <clears throat> they had a, at their mayor making uh, meeting, they had one councillor who decided he was going to defect to the Tories and another one on holiday, so it looked like they were going to lose control. And the fire alarm went off, so the building had to be evacuated and the meeting had to be adjourned. And by the time they had the next meeting, of course, everybody was back on side and um, Agnes uh, was uh, elected she's, the she's Labour mayor. in the end. She's she there is. in all her finery in the paper. You must get the paper if you want to see Agnes there. Plans for um, London, a London-wide authority, they were outlined in the Queen's speech this week. Obviously, we all know that. But um, it will alter quite significantly the framework of Barnet Council, again, according to the paper. Yes, well, the, um, a lot of the Labour councillors are very in favour of this. Um, a lot of councils in London are Labour controlled. So the, the council, local, the council for London is, is likely to be Labour controlled. So the Tories never wanted a Greater London Council because it wasn't likely to be under their control. But of course all the Tories in Barnet are saying, what about the cost? Hang on, all the cost. So uh, it's, um, it's up in the air what's going to happen with it, I think. Uh. I like this one because it's, it's great to see a local council um, tripped up by their own rules and regulations, particularly when it comes to planning permission. Now, they've gone and shoved a fence up without getting planning permission themselves, and they've been caught out. They have. They've been having sending uh, planning officers out to AGMs of local associations saying, if you see any illegal planning, tell us. If you see an illegal building, tell us. Report these people. And they've done it themselves. It was, so only, it was only a fence, but well, even it was, so, it proves the point. They're going to apply for retrospective planning, planning permission. It's not totally illegal, but it's, uh, it's quite amusing. I think so, too, yes. Now, this is a very sad story, to, unfortunately, to end this on. Um, a housewife who is known to suffer from depression, yes. her husband has appealed because she's gone missing. Now, it's um, quite a few days now. Mrs. Hudson, um, age 46, she was last seen last Friday. Yes, Irene Hudson. Um, Police are increasingly worried about her. Um, she, they're hoping that she'll get in touch. Her husband has said, get in touch. Let us know where you are. Great worry, I should think. But if you have any idea at all where Mrs Hudson might be, she was actually seen wearing a leather coat at last time she was seen when she went missing. Anyone with any information, um, could you call Collingdale Police Station on 0181 200 That's 0181 200 1212. Amanda, thank you very much for sparing the time to come in and talk to us and tell us a little bit about the Edgware and Mill Hill Times. Thank you.
Good morning, Chris. Thanks for coming to Channel One. Very much a people's paper, a, a weighty paper, which deals with very weighty issues. And you're campaigning very heavily, starting with our first story here, um, a real crisis in your area to do with the health service. That's right. And really the treatment of that story is born out of frustration, the frustration really of having this kind of story time and time again where we've had a health but deficit and um, we felt that we the, the, the best way forward would be to directly plead to the uh, to the Prime Minister. Well, it's a deficit of 13 million pounds, possibly more than that you That's think That's right, yes, now. the CHC are predicting it could go to 20 million. Yes. The, you've documented that extensively the misery caused um, and, and the effects felt by patients what do you feel is going to happen as a result of your letter? Well, wh what we hope is that uh, the new government will look at things in a different way because it, it, appears, to, it appears to everyone, in fact, as I, as I understand it, that um, the health reforms haven't worked and things aren't working as they should do at the moment. In fact, last weekend I know that one of the, ca uh, the, the, the real campaigners for the health reform has changed his tune. And uh, I think really it's, it, the days are numbered for the way they're, they're dealing with it. And, we're, what we're looking for is the government to take a fresh look at it. How soon do you expect a response from Tony Blair? Well, we're looking at doing something next week in next week's paper. We'll be, we'll be talking to some experts with, with, you know, with regard to what their views on how they can get out of this mess. And we hope that uh, you know, the Prime Minister will, mm -hmm. will actually come back to us. And Very serious problem. Though I couldn't help but notice um, an article you've got further back through the pages here, Past Life. It's a retrospective look at um, articles in the paper. 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 60 years ago. I had to, to just pull this one out. This is the first cup of tea from a trolley presented by to the King George Hospital by its Patients League. And it says here, um, it'll, be, it'll supply a long and felt want to be much appreciated by those who have waited for long periods at the hospital. <laughs> so uh, it, it's... Um, things don't change, Things do don't change. That That's was 60 right. years ago. The first cup of tea was handed yes. to Matron I, I on the that, board. I think that lady's still working there now, <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on now. Um, Still in politi politics, um, the Labour Party have been accused lately of being rather too smug about their, their huge victory. And you've pulled it, you've got a story here um, of, of very, very bad taste I, that you've um, actually picked on here. The large black crucifix bearing the slogan, The Tory government died May the 1st, 1997. Rest in peace. Tell us more about that. Yes, well, it's just the councillor who's really taken the victory too far, isn't it, really? I mean, we haven't, on a local level, we haven't had too much gloating really and uh, but I think this uh, this really sort of takes the biscuit doesn't it when it comes to uh very poor taste indeed. Indeed. Yes, and another story which um, is an ongoing situation and a very delicate situation as I, I know you'll explain in just a moment um, a councillor who is no longer with Ilford I understand was trading housing for sex and it involved up to 200 women yeah Tell it's actually, yeah, it's actually a housing worker at Barking and Dagenham yes. um, it's a sad story really because there, there are no winners here because it appears that uh, the actual worker who's accused of, of this is, uh, is, is getting treatment for it and uh, obviously his family are very upset about the allegations. So reading it this week you would just feel outraged this has happened and perhaps more screening should have taken place when it well, came to employment. Well one would think so really, I mean as I say there's no winners here really yeah. is there, there's, there's, yeah. there's uh, up to 200 women that yeah. have been terrified yeah. and also this chap who's obviously, um, who's obviously not well um, so that's the follow-up really next week, if anyone wants to follow that story, the yes. follow-up is actually looking at his side of the, yeah. the situation. He's actually a very that's sick right. individual. We'll do have an interview with, with the family next week yeah. to sort of put their, their side of the story, but uh, you, you can't get away from the fact that uh, people have suffered here. You know. Well, to end on a lighter note, your sports supplement here has a great picture. There we've got it. Off to Wembley again today, another star-studded event, which I hear you're hot-footing it to. Tell us a little bit about that to round up. Well, that's right, yes. I mean, we're delighted in our first season of sponsoring uh, Dagenham and Redbridge that they've, uh, they've actually got a Wembley final for us. And, uh, oh, you've, got, you've come well equipped for the I event. I have come well equipped. I've got my shirt um, down oh, here. Let's, that let's, I'm see, going let's see the shirt. Let's give the shirt a good There we have. <laughs> Fantastic. So we wish them the best of luck us. for this afternoon. Hold it up so we can there really we see that. I should be wearing that later and I should be cheering them on. Hopefully uh, they'll be bringing the uh, FA Trophy back to uh, Dagenham. Let's hope so. And okay. um, sponsored by the Alford Reporter. That's right, yeah. Chris, thank you very week. much for coming in. Thanks very much.